Good morning, everybody. How are we today? So, I'm not going to test my mic, so if no one can hear me, let me know. Although you won't know, because you wouldn't have heard me say that, would you? Uh, how are we all doing? So, we've got some people already. Uh, we've got Marie Marie from Michigan. We've got BJ from West Virginia. And Blonde Scales 1 from the Oven of Arkansas. Welcome to today's stream. I'll just move this ever so slightly. And Toowoomba. So we've got our first uh, Australian participant today. I don't know about you, Chris. Um, here in Perth, it's been getting nice and warm over the past uh, couple of days. I've actually been able to sit without my cardigan on in the afternoons. Um, what I'm actually planning today, because it's been so nice when I've done outside, I'm afraid today the shorts will be coming out and we're back to wearing shorts rather than wearing my cargo trousers. Looking forward to that. Uh, thanks, BJ. Good on the mic. And uh, from Teresa Harris, welcome to you. I don't think I saw you when I was saying hello. Welcome to you. Hot in North Carolina today, 105. Not sure what 105 is in uh, in Celsius. I'm afraid I'm not very good with the Fahrenheit scale. Let me just fetch in my other iPad so it's handy, just in case I need it. We'll, we will make a start in a minute, and then what I want is something called Carrot, which is the weather app of choice for me. And I can tell you exactly where we are today. Carrot, there we go. It's just refreshing. Sometime this week would be nice. So currently here at, at what, 8.30 in the morning, 15 degrees, and we're looking at a high of 21, uh, that's Celsius. Let me quickly do... so. 21 Celsius, perhaps if I can get to the keyboard, 21 C in F. So there, we're looking at 70 Fahrenheit today, but yeah, planning, hopefully the shorts will be out. Um, Chris, still waiting for spring, yeah, I know what you mean, I think it's, uh, let me just start clicking on these and we can actually see what is coming up, hopefully if I've got this configured right. There we go, still waiting for spring. Yeah, I know what you mean there, Chris. It's um, just, as I say, it's just starting here in Perth, but what, we've got four or five four or five days before spring officially starts. Blonde Scales 1, the heat index was 107 before we got, got, we got a tiny shower. Uh, oh, the problem with showers is that can make it quite humid as well. Uh, for me, I think it's more the humidity than, than the heat that gets me. Chris, thanks. So that that one hundred and whatever I asked about earlier, oh, going all over the place. That's about forty degrees Celsius. So that's like summer weather here in Perth. So I saw earlier on. Let me just scroll back up my messages list. I can't get this to play properly f for some reason. Um, there we go. So we had a question, BJ here, I wonder what Gary wants to talk about tonight. I haven't heard uh, what he's got planned yet. Oh, let me leave that on the screen. There we go. I don't know. I'm really messing up today. So today I thought I'd talk about something different. I know everything's different really. Uh, so we'll see that in a second. Dean, hi from Adelaide. Welcome. Inertia 4, welcome to you. Uh, Blonde Scales 1, what's our predicted temp? I know, but got to remember it's tail end of winter and that's the temperature at tail end of winter. Just wait till summer gets here. Okay, so what we're going to do today is I thought we'd take a look at what's in one of my pen cases. But well, I've got quite a few. And so what I thought we'll do is we're going to do this as quite random. Let me just move this around a wee bit. There we are, that's a little bit better and more central now. What I'd like you to do is one person to, to, to put in left or right. And then another person put in a number between 1 and 10. Now, there's a 30-second-ish delay, so I will be waiting 30 seconds before I see those. And I'll see, and I'll take the first comment that's in the chat as being, you know, the, the one that's selected. So one person left or right, the other person between 1 and 10. That means that whatever pen tray we get, it's going to be totally random. So 
then we have to work out, well, how good is Gary at remembering what's in them? Uh, hopefully the chat will refresh shortly. Okay, we've got BJ saying right, so that's this side, and Blonde Scales 1 saying 5. So what I'm going to do, there we go, here's my pen cases on the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the, I picked the fifth tray, so we're going really random. And the fifth tray, not sure if this will come out properly, is USA. So these are pens that I have, or obviously that I, have, that I own, that are by USA companies. So we've actually got quite a few. Let me just show you this. So what I'm going to do is swap on over now to the top-down view. Just pop all this stuff out of the way. I'm running out of places to put things. I'll just squ squiddle on over. So here we've got the pen tray. So as you can see, I label my slots just so I know what's in, roughly what's in what. And we're going to take a look. Now, two of these pens are inked up. So let me pull one of them out. Just get that from my inked up tray, just so I can make sure I'm being nice and thorough. So we'll start off. We've got the Conklin All American. This it's one of my most disappointing pens. I've had mega issues with this. It's um, it's in this gorgeous wood. I think it's walnut, golden walnut. I think it was. At the moment, I've actually got a Jin Hao nib in here because I was having terrible problems with the Conklin nib. Cartridge converter pen, all metal fittings. Why am I saying this is... <laughs> it is, it's honestly, it's the worst pen I've ever owned. It doesn't write. It's terrible. I can maybe write a few words and it's fine. If I've just inked it up, I can write a couple of pages and it's fine. The problem that I've got is, and I think it's because of this wood material. I'm not sure if I can. So we've got a bit of a plastic liner, but it doesn't go all the way. And what I think is happening is the actual wood is letting air in, and that's what's causing the nib to dry out. Now, it's hard to show you, but no, it helps if I can get this under the camera. But where, where the clip goes into the body, there's a hole. And I think that's where the issue is, is that's what's letting the air come in and out. So as soon as I cap this, within minutes, the nibs dried out. And it's a terrible, complete pain in the butt to get working again. The other issue I had was with the body here. It came unstuck from the actual... Um, bit of metal where the section is. What I had to do is glue it back on. And when, when it came unstuck, there was a little tiny bit of glue and that was all that was holding it on. I really do think it was real bad workmanship. Worst pen I've ever owned. Although I've not got a slot labelled for it, I was sent by a viewer, and really do appreciate it, I was sent this. This is the Conklin Durograph. Having completely different issues, well not issues, different um, experience, that's the word I'm looking for with this. I still get an issue where if I don't use the pen for a while it dries out. Let me just fetch in a bit of note paper. This has been sat for what maybe two three weeks. You know so it's writing fine at the moment but then I do occasionally get a little bit of an issue with ink flow. This book I'm using here, get rid of that post I've done that. Um, it's just what I use. It's like what I call a project book. It was like 50 Auss Aussie cents. Really dirt cheap. So I'm, I'm working on a new project at the moment. And so this is where I make my notes as I'm going on and, and, you know, putting my thoughts about what I do. You know, I ask myself questions. It helps me to think about it. So it's just cheap paper, but it works all right. So yeah, completely different experience. This one works not too bad. It's got a medium nib on it. Cartridge converter, you can see there we've got some nice green ink, which we just saw when I was writing. 
this one I'm really enjoying getting on really nicely with it. So that's the Conklin Durograph. So moving along the bus, we've got a cross Bailey light. Let me just open this up. Can I open it up? Hopefully that lid won't close on us. Oh, he says moving it and then it closes. I don't know, I've run out of space today. I am keeping an eye on the, the chat as well. Anyway, cross Bailey light. This was, you know, I think it was actually one of the first um, American pens I got. It's nice. It's actually lengthwise not too bad. Nib's quite small on this. I've only used this a couple of times, which is a shame because I think it's not too bad. Again, we've got a cartridge converter here. I need to use this a bit more often. The converter here is slightly different because we've got what is wider here than it narrows down a little bit, which is unusual. I've just noticed that detail. It's a nice grey colour. means I can use it with anything. I think I need to get this pen out and use this a bit more. And I believe the nibs are medium. So that's cross barely light. The next one, which wasn't in here because it's inked up, is the Monteverde Ritma. This was suggested to me by uh, someone, uh, uh, Paul it was, one of the viewers. Metal pen, right, chunky, heavy pen. I've got to be honest, it's very, very nice. I was really surprised. It's got on there a broad nib. It's a Yoho nib. And again, cartridge converter. Now, I did have problems um, a while back with this pen, again, with flow issues. But it was, to me, it was down to um, the actual ink, I think. I add in there um, Dye Mine Olive Swirl, which was from last year's ink vent. And that had, um, I think it was chameleon, so it's like shimmer particles. And I think they were blocking up the feed. I think that was the issue. So I was forever having to prime the feed. I've now got in here, oh, I can't remember. It might be uh, Pilot Irishesoku Shinryoku, but it might be a different green ink. Uh, in fact, the other one it might be. Let me just do a quick scribble. Yeah, it's not. It's Alt Gold Run, um, Raw and Lena Alt Gold Run. Really nice. I like this combo, and I haven't had them same issues with it since that. So that was the issue with this was down to the ink. But I love the weight of this pen. It's nice. It's chunky. It's really comfortable to, to use. Downside is this section. It's metallic, a bit slippy. So you've got to be careful how you hold it. And there's no lip at the bottom, so my fingers easily slip down and onto the nib. But other than that, really nice pen. Next up, we've got... This is a Retro 51 Tornado. I think it was the Abraham Lincoln model. So this is like a brass or bronzy type color. Absolutely love this material. I love the way it's starting to tarnish. I've had this now about a year. We've got on here a 1.1 stub nib. Again, I believe it's a Yoho one that's um, being branded Retro 51. The section is a little bit on the small side, but it's quite nice. Take the body off. We've got here a uh, converter. It doesn't feel like it's a very tight fit. That's one of the things which puts me off this. It feels, I mean, you can see how easy it is to just pull out. It's very, very loose. And I have had a couple of times when I've had this filled up where this has actually come loose when I've been writing, and that's caused, obviously, the ink to stop flowing. So I've just had to tuck that back in very, very carefully. Again, it's a nice size really enjoyable it will post but to me it's very heavy when it's posted and it doesn't post that well i mean yes i know i shook it but that was you <laughs> as you can see there having real fun with this so that's the retro 51 tornado next up we've got the uh, narwhal 365 from 2021 this is in the nautilus shape and this is uh, uh Brooks Blanks, and it's, what is it, Primary Manipulation 3.5. I have to be careful how I say that because my tongue gets really, really mangled around it. Um, after this, I'll quickly jump back and we'll have a look through the comments before we look at the rest. This is a lovely pen. I love the shape of the Nautilus. It's very nice, good fit in my hand. I have changed the nib on here. I've got a Goulet's nib, 
So this is a broad, wow, I tell you it's a combo, this is so wet. You may have seen it over the last few months in my pens and use videos. The ink window, that's one of the things that I don't like about this. I know I keep saying this, it's a bit on the small side. I'd have liked to have had that double the width. But it's nice, it's a good fit, you know, it doesn't post, not even worth attempting it. So that's the Now Wall 365. Uh, let's jump over. Uh, BJ never had a wood pen. I've got a couple of other wooden pens that I don't have the same problem with. I think it's purely with this Conklin All-American. I think it's down to that liner. I will eventually get another All-American to try to give it another go. I just would not get a wooden one again. And I've seen on the internet a lot of people complaining about the same issue with this pen. <coughs> um, BJ certainly wouldn't avoid wooden pens, but I wouldn't go out of my way to buy, buy I say, buy another one of that. Um, we've got Teresa. Uh, my worst pen purchase, a Conklin Coronet. Paid $39 and an initial $25 to get the nib sorted. I seem to be hearing a lot of, of people saying the same thing about Conklin, about there seems to be a lot of issues with how they write. So not sure what's causing that, you know, is it a case of, you know, bad quality control, bad manufacturing processes? I don't know. I'd, I would love to know. I believe the pen, I believe they're made for them in China now. They used to be made in the US. Is it Toledo or around the area? Um, but I, I think it, I can never remember. I want to say it's Yaffa Brands own it now, but it might be another one. But... They're the same company that own Monteverde, but they're the same company that own Monteverde. And I've not had any issues yet with that Monteverde pen, but that's not out of an example of one. Um, BJ, like the look of the Ritma. I think they have a, ma yeah, they do have a magnetic cap. Um, it's definitely worth trying. I mean, the cap is really good. Let's, let's tip so there's the cap i'm just going to gently put it on and then slowly just gently tapping it and then eventually the, the magnet takes hold and let me move it up here to the mic then you can hear it you get a really satisfying click i don't personally like magnetic caps i've got to be honest um if you've got like a pacemaker they're affected by magnetism and where it would be if you were putting it in a shirt pocket is virtually where the pacemaker would be so you can't put them in a, a shirt pocket so that's a little bit of a disadvantage uh teresa the coronet's converter keeps coming unstuck when all the parts hold together it the plans are the the, the pen is a pleasure can't talk today yeah that's similar to, as i said that's what i'm finding with that retro 51 as well it's down to that converter coming out uh chris worst pen so far is a jinhao 80 didn't write well uh messed up the nib trying to fix it currently got some gold jinhao nibs on order so that i can fix it i've not tried an 80 i've got a number of the other uh like 85s or something like that um, I've got a Jinhao 82, which um, has been borrowed by my wife um, to be given back to me during the ink vent process. Um, if you weren't watching my videos last year and the year before, during December, um, I get myself the um, the Diamine ink vent calendar. And then I do a daily video where I'm looking at the ink that's in it. Uh, in them videos, so obviously I open up the Diamine ink vent calendar and I swatch it. What I then do whilst it's sitting and drying, um, I've got a pro I, you know, I get a proper chocolate calendar, so I open that up. The chocolate actually gets it goes to the wife. I don't eat chocolate very often. And then the other thing that I do is my wife she buys me a, a small gift which I also open. Usually something to do with stationery or some other of my interests. Not sure if you can see it. Let me switch to camera view. Um, behind me here, this uh, baby Yoda, that was one of them, Broku. And then last year, she got me a, a whole load of these, which were opened on, oh, I'm on there, aren't they? There. So this one's Darth Vader. Uh, I've got six of these. 
so they're, they're all like things that are really part of my interests you know not just pens but other interests so i'll put that back later and then once that's done that means the ink's had time to dry and then i will go and uh look quickly at that swatch and i try and find some similar colored inks in my current collection so that's all coming up in in december that's been well planned i know she's got i think she said at the latest count she's got 20 of the gifts so she's got either five or six more to go um so yep yeah, keep an eye out for that i say that should hopefully start in december let's go back to the phone or back to the overhead view um BJ gotta love a cap that snits clothes like glass. Yeah, that's one of the nice things with that with that ritmer. It's the way it sounds when it closes. Uh Gin Hour 80 is a lovely looking pen. Just a shame the nib was a fairly rare lemon. I've got to be honest, so far, I've been really, really lucky with my Gin Hao pens. Um I would say I've had one which was maybe a bit iffy, and I think I think that was a uh, what model was that? I can't remember. But there's only been one, and that's been over like three years. Anyway, back to looking through the tray. So next up, we've got, again, a Narwhal. This is the Narwhal Nautilus. This was one of the original releases of the Nautilus. This is the Pelagia Nautiluca, and hopefully I haven't mangled that. Let's just get rid of that comment. Just pop that down. So this is the one where we've got the portholes. Again, the portholes, you know, they're meant to be there as an ink window. I think they're more pretty than useful. The nib on here, that's a now all nib, and this is a, I think this is a medium. Might be a broad. Uh, can't see, let me get me my handy loop out. I can't actually see a mark in here to say what width it is. It'll be in my database, but I think it's a medium. It's a nice pen, unusual colouring. I need to get this out and get, it, get this inked up again. I haven't used it for ages. These Nautilus models, they hold an awful lot of ink, and they're really, really, you know, just lasts and lasts and lasts. Next to that, we've got, this is the Key West. Uh, I think this is the Isla Morada, the yellow one. Very sparkly pen, isn't it? Loads of sparkles in there. There we go. There's a now one nib. And this one, it's cartridge converter. The Key West model, they're all cartridge converters. Really nice. Again, with this pen, the problem I find, it does feel a bit short and thin. It's usable. It can post, but then posted, it makes it feel back heavy and a bit too long. And it doesn't post very well either. I've also got the purple version of it. This was a limited edition uh, version. So this is the purple one. And the purple one is, 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 come on, Gary. Let, I'm going to have to open up my spreadsheet, my, well, my database. Let's tell you what the name is. Oh, my poor nose is running today again. Uh, now all purple one is the purple one. Uh, where are you? Here we go. It's Las Coloradas, and on here this has got a broad nib. The this one here, the going back quickly to that Nautilus, it's an extra broad nib. So Las Coloradas again, it's it's very similar to the other one just in purple. So it's nice to have a couple of different colours. Next up, we've got the school curl. This is Chromis Teal. Love the colouring of this. It's a pen I don't use it often enough. I should use it more often. I do tend to use my other school curl, which normally sits next to it, but it's one I've been using lately. Let's fetch them both out. So you can see there, so we've got Paul Peter Navy and Chromis Teal. I'll put that one away. I've, this has got, I want to say it's an hour wall nib. I think it is the hour wall nib. Let me look. Yeah, this has got a medium nib. Again, a piston filling pen. Uh, let's just work that mechanism. 
Same comment though, I'd love if the ink window was a little bit wider, just so I can make it easier to see. I do like being able to actually see the ink window when I don't have, uh, when I've got the cap on, I think that's quite nice. And as I quickly showed you, the last pen that's in this tray, this is the Paul Peter Navy school kill. So that's what's in that tray. What do you think about this? Is this something you'd be interested in me doing some more of, you know, where we literally at random pick a tray to look through? I'll just pop this away. As you can see there, I've got my labels. I just use a, a Dymo labeler. I like things organized. I like to know where things are. So I've popped that away. Let me switch back to the camera for a second. Uh, fetch back my script so I know what I'm doing and fetching that notepad again so we can see what we're doing. Just gonna look and see if we've got any more comments come through. Uh, BJ, I've got six Gin Ao 80s, love them. Uh, they, they take limey nibs, so that's well worth knowing. So, if, like, I've got a couple of limeys, which, you know, they're all right. I've got the, um, oh, the, the, the Safari, I, I don't know what it is, I just don't like the Safari one. I've got an AL Star here, I love this ALR Star, ALR, AL Star. I might actually do some writing with that in a second, we'll see if we've got the time. Um, Inertia form, two worst pens were the Hondian Black Forest and the Pen BBS 323. Sorry, I don't know if I showed you today's mug. We've got the Hulk, is that um, Thor, Captain America, and Iron Man. And we've got my, my usual peppermint tea in there. Um, I've got a the Light of Hope, which is part of the Black Forest series. Uh, I do find that's a very thin pen. Um, it's nice enough to use. I don't, I'm not sure if I've got it inked up at the moment. Oh, just knocked everything all over the place. Can't see it. Uh, but I couldn't see it. I'll have to look for that because I'm sure I couldn't see it when I was looking in my box the other day for it. Hmm, I'll have a look at that. Uh, let me just make a note if I can find somewhere to make a note. That many pens and paper, nothing to write with look for L of H uh, pen BBS I've only got the one uh, I've got the um, an aluminium one in like a, a is it like a coffee color a lungo color I've only used it a couple of times I need to get that inked up again problem with it it's an extra fine nib I just don't like the nib Uh, can't move, uh, there we are, struggling to move the mouse. BJ, I like being able to use a Lamy nib without being stuck with a triangle grip. I'm not sure, but with me, it's not so much the grip, I don't mind it on the AL Star. I just don't know what it is about the Safari. I just cannot get used to it. I mean, the nib writes well. The pen, not too bad a shape, I just don't know what it is. Um, Teresa the Nautilus, uh, yes, that was, oh, clicked the wrong place. Yes, Teresa, that was one of the um, Ebonite ones. Very nice, really nice to feel. Um, the colours, I'm still not, although I like it, and uh, it's got plenty of different colours in, they do feel a bit like a matte type colour, whereas I find with a lot of my pens, I like more of the, um, like the satiny feel. I don't know how you describe it. It's not the matte feel, but like the shiny feel. Um, Chris, Lamy Nibs worth more than the Gin 80. <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple of pens like that. But yes, that's a possibility I am, that I have considered. The main problem with the Gin Hao Nibs is that you can't get anything wider than a fine. Yeah, that's the same t for me with a lot of um, the Chinese pens I've got. It's why I don't often buy pen BBS pens now. You know, I'll buy a model if it looks really nice, but usually you can only get fine or extra fine. Um, the Jin Hao X159, I've currently only got one of those. Um, it's got a fine nib. I know they do them with a medium, but every time I go looking for them, I just struggle to find one. I will find one eventually. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean about the nibs. And that's where if you can get them with a number six size nib, it's nice and easy to swap. So I have swapped over a couple of nibs on a couple of the pens. One of them, I'm still getting used to the nib, 
um, it's not inked up at the moment, has got a um, cursive italic nib that I got from a company in, I think it was India. Uh, I'm still playing around with that one. I want to say Kiwi pens, but it might not be. Um, so that's something I am, I'm looking at. But yeah, nib choice, very limited. Uh, we've got Blondesdale's one. I like the glittery purple one. Yeah, my wife likes that. It's it's nice. Um, I got them because they're different. And, you know, I like to try and experiment a lot with pens. And they look all right. Sorry, the nose is all going again. Um, tra uh, Teresa, I've been to Isla Morada. Love the Nowal Key West. Yeah, I actually do like the Key West. I wish they'd do some more converter pens. Because the problem is the... The um, piston fillers, they do seem to hold a lot of ink. And I don't like throwing ink out. And I won't put ink from a pen back into a bottle. So they just seem to go on and on and on and on and on. You know, I get months of use out of one. Uh, Teresa, yes, I like this content. And BJ, nice to see collections. Um, so thank you for that. What I'll do, it won't be every week, but... I'll, every few weeks we'll do another one I just think it's nice, it's a way to explore and add a bit of randomness to it Blondesdale's one uh, you keep your pens better organised than I do, I'm afraid my wife it's one of the things that annoys my wife about me I love everything being organised my books on my bookcase they are sorted by author's name and by date of publication um, we don't have many DVDs and CDs now, uh, but when they were, they were ordered by uh, title alphabetically. And I could go and look at my bookshelf, I could look at the DVD shelf, even though there was loads on them, and I could tell you if, <laughs> not only if one was missing, but what it was. Um, so that is something, yeah, it does annoy my wife. I l I'm very organised with everything. Everything has to be in the right place, and everything has to be done in the right way. And one of the things she laughs about when we go away, not that we go away very often nowadays, but whenever we're going anywhere, even weeks before, I will make lists of what needs to be done and the order it needs to be done in. And I go through and I can't leave the house until I've checked every single item. Um, but yeah, thank you for that. I, do, I say it's just, I'm, I think it's my mind. I just like things to be organised. I like routines. I like set ways of doing things. Blonde Scales 1. Uh, I've yet to try out uh, my one Lamy pen. So what Lamy pen is, is that uh, like a Safari, the AL Star? Um, be interesting to know about that. Really, really like, I say, I like the AL Star. But it's the exact same shape as the Safari. Let me pull out the Safari. Uh, it's in here somewhere. There it is. I'd already got it out ready. You know, so shape-wise, they're the same. It's just aluminium versus, like, plastic. And I don't know what it is, but I like this, but I don't like that. Um, Chris Robinson really liked my Safari. Blonde Scales 1, up. Oh, there's answering the question that I asked. Is an AL Star. BJ, I like the Lamy nibs, but the triangle grip drives me nuts and the feeds are keyed and the feeds are keyed so you can't adjust the angle of the nib to the grip yeah I, I, i'm with you that there that is it's like that sweet spot thing so you can't just turn it around uh that's the nice thing with the round nibs you know the round sections you can orientate it differently i've been suffering because of that though uh my waterman karen this is the pen i'm writing with today i've actually been finding that i've had some issues with this and it's because of the angle that I hold it at. So that's something I'm trying to correct. Uh, Blonde Scales 1, sorting books by author makes sense. I keep pressing him off as well as on. Never mind, there we go, we're back. Um, yeah, uh, I say it's just my mind. I'm really weird. I say it does my wife's head in. Teresa, any chance of a bookshelf tour? Uh, Tom Otto of Gold Spots Pens recently talked a bit about books, as does Hemingway Jones. Yeah, I can do. Um, to be honest, most of my books, in fact, yeah, most of them are um, fantasy books. I think I've still got some Agatha Christie ones. Um, past few years, if I've been buying books, I've been buying ebooks. So the the pen the 
bookcase isn't fully up. What I'll do, it's in a different room than here. What I'll do, let me make a note. Uh, make a note. Uh, there we go, make a note. Come on. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take some photos. Bookshelves. Uh, and maybe we can have that as a topic, maybe in a couple of, couple of three weeks. Uh, have we got any more at the moment? No. Uh, Teresa, fantasy is my favourite genre. It is mine. Um, first got into fantasy books by reading The Lord of the Rings. I was 14. Uh, the first 100 pages, and I've, I may have told this story before, it took me about three months to get through the first 100 pages. After that, I went through the rest of the book in about a month. I've reread Lord of the Rings maybe five or six times now. Really like it. After Lord of the Rings, somebody uh, told me about Stephen Donaldson, the um, the Covenants of, of the books of, is it Thomas Covenant? I loved them, really liked them. And then I got into um, David Eddings, which are, you know, they were smaller books compared to the Thomas Covenant were about that wide, the David Eddings about that wide. And David Eddings, his books just hooked me. That was it. I was all in. It looked, I was actually that all in that every time a new book was released, I would buy the hardback version. I would take the day off, whatever I was doing, and I would be at the shop at 9 o'clock in the morning to get it. And I wouldn't. Uh, I'd go straight home, and I'd read it all in one day. And then a few days later, I'd reread it again, but slower. Absolutely loved it. Uh, Blonde Scales 1, two of some of your other hobbies and interests would be nice. Uh, yeah, my other main hobby or interest isn't really something I can give you a tour of. Um, it's software development. I mean, I could show you me writing a program, but it's that'd be boring. Um, I say I love reading. Uh, um, occasionally, I'll do photography, so uh, I don't know if it's still up there. No, I've moved everything around. But all the photos that I have, they're all photos I've taken. Uh, but yeah, I'll have I'll have to work out how I can do that in an interesting way. So I'll think about that one. Uh, BJ Tolkien is the master. Yeah, he is. He he really launched the genre. And I say I've reread. I don't know how many times the Lord of the Rings. I've reread The Hobbit again six seven times. The other week, oh the other week, a few months ago, I uh, actually was able to read completely this completely the Silmarillion I had tried it years ago but it was just so hard going uh, but really enjoyed that when I was able to actually read it and I know there's some other ones is there the Lost Tales I'll try and read them in a few you know, maybe well, I'm going to say a few months but they're on the list to read eventually Chris um, the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant ruined my life for six weeks started at number one and then read them straight through I've read them all apart from the last two that were released i think that was the third ones what i think i need to do though if i'm going to finish it off is maybe reread right from the start um yeah it was nice it was it was quite an interesting way and i loved the white gold um so the third or part of the story is white gold is to do with magic in the land he gets transported to um and i think partly it was because of that uh, I don't know if you how well you can see it. There's my wedding ring. So I've got gold on the outside and I've got white gold on the inside because of my love from what I read with Thomas Covenants. My parents like to read and they pass that on to my brother and I. Yeah, my son's the same. I love reading. Um, he loves reading. He sits outside um, when he comes in from work and he'll sit for hours just reading. Uh, to me absolutely love reading and yes i can watch so like lord of the rings i've watched the lord of the rings movies watched the hobbit movies but reading the books that just takes me more into the world and i don't know it's just the way you imagine things i'm watching um the wheel of time series at the moment that's on um is it prime uh i've read all the wheel of time books and reading it 
I'm watching this series, the characters are really different than how I imagined them, which was, you know, quite interesting to to think about. Uh, Mario, weird software dev, yet yeah, my passion since I was a little kid was developing software. Um, I know I've told this story before, but it started when I was about eight-ish when I saw Star Trek on TV and I wanted to be like Mr. Spock working with computers. Um, I was 11. I got my first you know, like part-time job to earn money and I saved up a whole 50 pounds and I bought a ZX81. And I would, you know, I just loved it. Uh, from there, I, I was slightly off the mainstream. So I had ZX81, I had, um, then I had an Oric one. Uh, then I had another one, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, uh, but it was like a BBC Micro, something like that. And then ha the BBC Micro, then I had um, an Amiga. Uh, then I got into um, PCs and about 15 years ago I got into Mac and everything I do now is Apple oriented so I do um, my job when I worked was working in IT so uh, I used to work for IBM you know my entire career has been software development based and my wife, she used to say she's the only person she knows of. I would spend all day at work coding. I would come home and I'd quite happily sit there and watch all night doing um, software dev. And even now, um, I've closed it at the moment, but I've got Xcode on my Mac, which is the Mac um, development tool. And I'm working on a number of apps. So I've got my uh, pen management app where I keep all my pens and inks. That's one I've written. I'm working on a new app at the moment, or a prototype for an app, to do with actually TV shows and being able to track what TV shows I've watched. Um, and then every couple of months, I'm prototyping new stuff. So I'm always playing. I'm always learning. But I don't know what... I just love it. It's my passion. It's It's my... I could give up fountain pens. I could give up reading. I could give up everything else. I could never, ever, ever give up uh, software dev. So yeah, that's really is my is my one driving thing. Uh, Mar Mario, how do you organise your inks and pens? So at the start, I showed quickly. We w went through one of my trays. So I've got uh, you can see behind here. I've got this IKEA shelf, and on there again from IKEA, I've got these pull out little shelves, and on there each of the, I've got two of these per shelf. These are A4 document boxes, which my wife made this liner for. And then in there, I've got my pens. So this one I pulled out. These are all Moonman or Marjan pens. Uh, the inks, I can't show it easily at the moment, but I've got two boxes uh, which sit on another IKEA shelf, and they're full of inks. Uh, I've got one which is mainly diamine, and the other one which is a mixture of other ones. Uh, I'm... We might look at the inks in one of my future videos. So we'll have a look at that. Uh, read the books, then watch the movies and point out everything they left out or messed up. Yeah, I do. My son came in because he's read the Wheel of Time books as well. Like somebody, uh, I can't remember who it was now, uh, Blond, like, like Blondscale's one was saying earlier about the parents reading and passing to the kids. So yeah, we've done that. Sorry. My nose is really playing up today, worse than normal. Uh, read the books and watch the movies. Yeah, so he came in last week and I was watching the second episode of the Wheel of Time series. And he said, what is it? And I, I was pointing out everything that they'd done wrong. Uh, Prashant, welcome to you. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. Um, BJ, yeah, I've got huge bins of inks. There's about, I've got about 150 inks at the moment. Uh, BJ Admirable Collection, Admirable Collection of Diamine, all together and labelled. Again, this comes back to my everything's got to be in the right place and everything's got to be uh, sorted and ordered. Uh, you know, I've just put, I've got this out for a video I'm going to record tomorrow. So on the top of each bottle, this is Aqua Lagoon. There's a little sticker, and where possible, I try and have the sticker roughly the same colour as the 
actual link and then on there I've got written how to see uh, a number so this is number 70 so I know where it is and which ink it is um, Teresa how wonderful to, sp to have spent your career doing something you love it really is I've been so lucky as I said there's the one thing I could give up everything else I just could not give that up uh, Mario nice thank you <laughs> Um, okay, let's swap on over and we'll do some writing. So, I've gone back over to the camera view. Or the overhead view, should I say. Uh, let's get started. There we go. So, we'll start with that Lamy one that I was saying, because I didn't actually write my title on the page. So, this is pens for weekending. And it was yesterday, which was the 26th of August. For some of you, it may still be the 26th of August. So this is what I say, Lamy All Star. And this has got a 1.5 stub. I love using this for my titles. Uh, I can't remember what's the ink I've got in here at the moment. Let me just go and look. I can tell you. That's why I have a database. Uh, Lamy All Star, JKL... It's Robert Oster Cosmic Swirl. It was the last of a sample that I had. So the pens I've been using this week. The first one I can't write with because it's out of ink. This is the Now War School Kill. This is in Paul Peter Navy. And this had uh, Noodler's Navajo Turquoise in it. Quite a nice match. We looked at this a bit earlier, so I won't go into too much detail on it. Oh, jumping ahead there. The next pen. So the pen from Monday. This is the Fremantle Handmade Pen. So I did a fountain pen focus on that last week. Love this material. It's made by the maker. He went out and he got all like bits of rock, I'm guessing sand and stuff. Uh, ground it all down, mixed it with a resin. Very pretty. So it's all Australian. It's a kit pen. I'm not sure what kit it was though. So this is the Fremantle. Handmade. It's got a medium nib. $99. It was $99, but that came with a ballpoint pen as well. The ink, I went for Robert Oster, so Australian pen, Australian ink. And it's an Australian named ink. It's Australis Oak. This pen, it's nice enough, I can see here, I do get occasional issues with it, but it's very pretty. It's a pen, it sits in my pace, case, can't talk, it's a pen that sits in my case for ages, and I should really use it more often. Tuesday's pen, Jin Hao 100 Centennial. I've always got at least one of these inked up, sometimes I've even got two or three. Nice pen, that duofold style pen. Still got the same Jin Hao nib. I've been lucky the nib writes really well. Cartridge converter. Same as that um, Fremantle one, that was a cartridge converter. Not a lot of ink left in this by the look of it, so it'll be getting refilled soon. Chances are with a different ink though. So we've got here a Jin Hao 100 Centennial. With a medium nib. Nice affordable pen. This was 18 Aussie dollars. And the ink, staying with Robert Oster. It's blue water ice. Nice writing pen. I've got, I say I've got a number of these, not had any issues with any of them. And watch Friday's video and you'll find out why this pen's being used. Next up, just move this up ever so slightly. So we've got here a Pen BBS 308. This is Mojito. Love the name of this. Hopefully I managed to pronounce it right. You can see it's a cartridge converter. I love this. I'm not going to call it demonstrate it. I love the transparent nature of this. Limited nib size though. So this, I believe, is a, a fine nib. So we've got here a Pen BBS. 308 with a fine nib 
Although it's a fine nib, it's quite a generous line, very similar in terms of what I see from that Jinhao 100. Price-wise, this was 32 Aussie dollars. And the ink is by Cult Pens. And it's deep, dark, green. Still got a reasonable amount of ink in here. Again, once this is out, I'm planning to refill this, but chances are with a different ink. Chances are still in a green ink, though. Oh, just move it out of the way. You don't want to be seeing the edge of my notes, do you? I need them because, just to remind me, more for the prices. This next one, I don't know how well this will write because it's virtually out of ink. Uh, I do need to get this cleaned out and refilled. I am planning to refill it. I'm thinking maybe with a red ink, but not 100% certain. I may go for blue. But because it's a white pen, you can really put anything in it. This is the Hondian. Hon, Hondian. This is the Hondian, and it's the N8. Fine nib again, I believe. Oh no, medium nib, I think, on this one. I don't know why I haven't got them uh, written down. Cartridge converter. As you see, very little ink. Hopefully, it may write enough to write the name of it. No, it doesn't. So, I won't be able to write with that one. But the Hyundai N8, that was 41 Aussie dollars when I got it. Next up, now I know this one will write because I filled it again with the same ink yesterday. This is the Just Turnings and the model is the Enceladus. And this beautiful material is Brooks Blanks Golden Blue J. Very nice. Such a pretty pen. So it's a handmade pen made by a gentleman over in Brisbane. This is part of this year's focus on buying Australian pens. Comes with a converter. Everything about it is resin, so you could if you want, I'm guessing, maybe silicon grease it, but possibly get away with eyedroppering. I don't intend to. I like using the converter. Yoho nib. This is a broad nib. So this is a just turnings. The model is actually called Enceladus. Enceladus. Broad nib. It's a steel nib. The ink. It's another rubber toster ink. And it's Tranquility. This is a very wet combo. Uh, not so much on this. This is Midori cotton paper. But on some of my uh, books that I write on, this comes through really badly. Let me just check this cheaper paper. You can see there, this is cheap paper, I know. But you can see it's showing through already. So that's a Just Turnings Enceladus. And then yesterday's pen. Let's move this up. It's the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. 14 karat gold nib. This is blue green nebula. Slightly transparent. Is it translucent? I can never remember. Again, cartridge converter. A bit of a small and thin pen. This one I have to use it posted. Post lovely though. The nib on this, wow, oh, it's so gorgeous. So this is a sailor. Uh, whilst I remember that just turned into pen should have put this on earlier it was 105 Aussie dollars remember though it's hand turned it's you know it's a handmade one so we've got here right we'll go back pro gear slim broad nib 14 karat gold nib you do pay for that now when I bought this which was about 18 months ago it was 224 Aussie dollars I think it's gone up in price since then the ink it's by Diamine And it's Aurora Borealis. Aurora. I don't know, I can't spell. Borealis. I wish they did an Aurora Australis ink as well. Maybe that's something if Robert Oster did, I would look at getting that. So the Aurora Australis, exact same thing as the Aurora Borealis, but Southern Hemisphere. Love this colour. This blue green nebula is really nice. Hopefully. You can see on the camera, there's all them like silver speckles and it look like stars. 
and then the blue green the color of a nebula very nice pen so let's go back over to the camera so they're the pens that i've been using this week we'll go back and look through our uh our comments uh blonde scales one uh nice ink color for the title it is it's it's nice as this purple uh, i say robert oster cosmic swirl normally i use in their um cult pens little pip which is like a purple background but then a mass a mass of gold sheen but because i tend to use that pen for titles i found that i think it's because of the sheening it would it would dry up quite quickly in the pen so i thought let's try some non-sheening inks for a while uh Miss Marilyn Darling, welcome. Don't worry about being late. You're here. That's all that matters. Uh, Chris, uh, I looked at the fountain pen kits. Uh, they're pretty much the same with a very narrow section. They are. That's one of the downsides with them. I did once think to myself, Gary, is it worth trying to get one and doing it and try and do something? But I just, I'm not that sort of person. I'm not, I'm not crafty. Again, I don't know if I've told the tale on here. But in our house, all the power tools, all the tools, everything like that, they belong to the wife. And I'm not allowed to even breathe on them, let alone use them. Uh, Blonde Skills 1, glad you made it. Uh, Marilyn, hello everybody. BJ, that brownish ink, it's nice that Australis oak. It's a sample that I've got. Um, my stepdaughter, my daughter, she doesn't like it. Uh, she put a post, because I post these on Facebook each day. And she described it as something, um, a, a bodily, uh, something like a bodily excretion after you've been drinking too much and have to go and sit on the toilet. Uh, it was very descriptive anyway. Uh, Teresa, I've got a centennial coming soon. I love the centennials. I say I've got, I think it's three at the moment. I will get more. Uh, but what I tend to do now with my pens is I've got a load, so to get another pen, it needs to be something that's either different or something that grabs me. So if I see a, new, a nice colour in the 100, I wouldn't think twice about getting it. You know, at what? Let's call it 20 Aussie dollars, a really good value. Blonde Scales 1, welcome, welcome. BJ, hello, hello. <laughs> that takes me back. Um, again, I know I'm, I'm uh, looking at British TV here. I don't know if it was shown anywhere else in the States or Australia or anywhere. Many, many years ago, there was the program Hello, Hello. And every time I see something like that, that just takes me back to thinking about that. Uh, Marilyn Darling, I absolutely hate what YouTube did to the screen. Uh, I think YouTube are, are really playing around a bit at the moment. I've noticed a lot of my things are changing. And, you know, I used to like watching the YouTube shorts. Uh, but they've changed it now, so they no longer appear in my um, uh, feed when I'm looking for stuff to watch. I don't know why. Uh, uh, Marilyn, hi, BJ. BJ, that pen BBS looks like a lot like the Jinhao 992. Yeah, in a way it does. Let me just turn around and grab one. Wrong box. So let's go back to the camera view. Let's shift that out of the way so you don't see the script. No, it's not that one. I want this one. So here are the two pens side by side. So this is the Pen BBS 308 in Mojito. This is a Jinhao 992 in green. Very, very similar. I think size-wise, the 992, a little bit shorter. But if you look at the styling and everything, yeah, I completely see what you're saying there, BJ. They look very, very similar. Let's go back to the camera. Uh, Long scales one, like the look of the Just Turning's pen. Oh, I tell you, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, photos and video just does not do it justice. Um, I do have the money put aside uh, to get another one. Um, what I do though is he, he puts put, uh, puts pictures of pens that he's got available up every so often on Facebook. I'm just waiting to see one that I like the look of. Purely, I say, I'm looking for the oh, posh word, aesthetics, is it? But anyway, the way it looks. Um, so, yeah, I've got that. Um, I do have a pen on order uh, from another Australian maker called um, K2 
Casey, Pens by Casey. Uh, it's actually, I, I know I've I picked it, I've ordered it, I paid for it. Uh, when it arrives, my wife will be taking it straight off because it's going in. It's actually going to be my Christmas present. Um, so when it comes on Christmas Day, I have to pretend I don't know about it. But oh, be, the, the material I've picked, very, very nice. I can't wait to see it when he's actually uh, finished making it. Uh, BJ, yeah, that just turns is a look. It is a very, very pretty. Uh, Teresa, future topic, future topic, grail pens, past, present, and future. Let me just add that in. If I don't add something in, I'll write it down. It gets forgotten. Uh, so let me just add that into my system. Grail pens, past, present, and future. And that's for a live. Right, that's added in. Uh, move that back a bit so I can actually move the mouse when I can find where it is. My mouse, where's my mouse pointer? There it is. There we go. Uh, Marilyn, yeah, while well, the gin how looks like the pen BBS, I've never thought about it until now. I'm actually going to put in another uh, idea. Uh, gonna add another pen idea. This will be for a normal video. Uh, comparison pen BBS 308 and gin how 992, same color. So like that green one, which I've just shown, I've got a few where hopefully I can get the same colour in both, and that will be a fountain pen showdown. So that's added in. Uh, BJ, uh, I used to buy a lot of different pens, and nowadays I just uh, for higher-end pilots. Uh, they're just so good. Then I write the guts out of them. BJ, I was exactly the same. Um, up till the start of this year, you know, I was buying... At least every other month, I was buying four or five pens from uh, AliExpress, so like Chinese pens. Um, I was buying the occasional more expensive one when I could save up the money. Uh, yes, I know I do these videos, so I do need a lot of pens to choose from. Uh, this year, though, is I decided to have a focus of, on what I was buying. So this year, the majority of my pen purchases... They are all pens by Australian pen makers. So I've got that Just Turnings that I showed you earlier. Uh, I've got a Platypus uh, Model 10. Um, I've got a couple of them kit pens made by, uh, obviously where the, the kit's put together and made by Australians. I've also got, uh, what else have I got? I've had one China order. Um, you'll actually uh, start seeing the first impressions videos from them in the next month or so i'm actually filming the first one tomorrow it's not inked up yet because i haven't filled, filmed it but the first one is going to be on this this is the moon man m400 nice pretty looking pen number six nib so if i need to if i don't like this nib i can change it it's a medium nib though so that's quite interesting uh i will be doing another aliexpress order but might not be for another couple of weeks. Uh, my wife wants some craft stuff, so we'll order it. We'll do like one big order all together. But yeah, this year focused Australian pens. Next year, I will have a different focus. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, and that might be something I may do with uh, channel members. So I do have channel membership available. As part of that, what I do is you get most of my videos a couple of days early, um, and then. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do a live just for members uh, later in the year, obviously, this one, where I talk about my thoughts for what I might might focus on next year, but also try and get input from the members. So gives them some, hopefully, some say into what I actually do as my focus. Um, I like this idea of a focus because it's really making me think about what I'm buying. As I say, I've got the money saved up for another Just Turnings as well. Uh, and then when I get my next you yeah, next like payment from YouTube, uh, what I'm looking at doing is using that money towards 
a, a pen a pen by a guy called that pen bloat i think it is he's um a maker over in sydney so yeah this year it's been all about australian pens inertia 4 those two pens look a lot like the sailor compass i do have a sailor compass as well um so that's another one let me pop it in i'll just say the uh in fact let me pop it in by going over here you can actually see what i do when i'm putting things in so let's go to the screen get the keyboard so i use something called uh, raycast and then I've got some shortcuts. So what I want to do is I want to add a pen idea to Notion. Notion's where I keep uh, my list of um, future videos. Well, all my videos. If you're interested in it, let me know because I do have a link I can share where you can actually see what, what's in there. You can see when I'm planning to record, planning to release. It's got my whole back catalogue, uh, most of them with links to the YouTube channel, YouTube uh, video for it. So name of the video. So I'm going to do pen BBS. 308 versus Sailor Compass. And this one, it's going to be a fountain pen showdown. So you can see these roughly what I categorize all my videos into. And let's quickly show, show you. Yeah, here's me look, talking about me looking at me. Let me just add a new tab in there. So Notion, here we go. So this is my content. This is like the current state of things. So these are videos I'll, I'll be recording tomorrow. These are all videos that I made and ready to go. You know, I've got, and I say I'm quite happy to share all this where you can have it redone. This is my recording schedule. As you can see, loads of them. I've got what recording planned out till what 17 up oh, 27 yeah right, all the way out to about the 17th of october i've got my re recording schedule planned out or my published schedule recording schedule so when am i going to be recording i generally record on a monday and a wednesday so we can see there you know fairly busy ideas that are scheduled so these are ideas that I've already decided when I'm going to be uh, recording them. Pen videos, which I've got, which I haven't even thought about yet. As you can see, I've got quite a few of these. 102 of them at the moment. So plenty of content to come. Next actions, I don't do much with this at the moment. Uh, so it doesn't actually show anything. Next actions was uh, a personal productivity channel that I tried. Um, I was struggling to get any traction with it. I may go back to it. Um, Next channel, tricky little questions. So here are some of the ideas. Uh, I've got a Christmas one here. Last year, I looked at um, how f how Santa is able to get around the world in one night. Um, I'm going to look here. Hopefully, I can find information on this. Each year, uh, NORAD have their Santa tracker. So I'm going to hopefully dig into that and do a little bit of video on that. So yeah, quite a few. So you can see there, pens to schedule. I don't know why I've got that twice. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, let me know. Uh, let's go back to the camera. Uh, Marilyn Darling, yeah, pen lookalikes. This is something I've said in a couple of videos. Um, I think a lot of the time, yes, there is a lot of copying going on. Uh, but there's only so many ways you can make a pen because it's like a controlled leak of ink, isn't it? And there's only so many ways you can do that. Teresa, the US, uh, fortunate to have a number of very good independent pen makers with enormous creativity, absolutely spot on. And, you know, the, the ability for them to have all the pen shows, I think is brilliant. Uh, it's something that's very limited down here. You know, obviously, we've got a, a lot smaller uh, population. I think the population is currently 22 million for the whole of Australia and australia is massive um i think perth where i live i think the last time i saw a figure for it the population was about five million for the entire perth area and that's like a spread of about three four hundred kilometers uh, in length and i'm not sure about depth maybe 30 or 40 uh, 
but yeah quite a big idea uh, not quite a big idea quite a big area BJ you might want to check out the Winston 699 against the Pilot 823 good cheaper VAC option to the 823 and almost a mirror copy for a tenth of the price I am I have a um, I do have a 699 and I bought it because I liked the look of the 823 but I wasn't sure you know it's a lot of money if you don't get on with the body shape so I actually got the 699 first to use um, I've had two 699s the first one was the vacuum filling version had terrible problems with it I don't know why but it just would not work the vacuum uh, and the pen actually you know the whole mechanism came apart on me I then got the piston version I love the piston version a very nice pen as you say it's virtually identical to the 823 uh, I think on my channel there is a showdown between the two. Um, I can't remember. Let me uh, see. Uh, yeah, if you go and search on my YouTube channel, you should be able to find that. Uh, where's the mouse gone? I keep losing the mouse. Here it is. Speaking of the San Francisco Pen Show, is happening right now. I know I said to my wife yesterday, um, I said, I don't know how many people will be on the uh, stream today because it is the, the San Francisco Pen Show. I see Mike Matheson, he's put out a, like a walk around video. Now, most of the pen shows he, go to, he goes to, I do watch those, because they're usually about an hour long. But when I went to look at the one for San Francisco, I think it was two and a half hours, I'm afraid. I just couldn't uh, justify that time at the moment, uh, or that amount of time. What I may do is watch it either tomorrow or Wednesday. So after I've finished edit, uh, filming, I go into editing and I like to have videos playing whilst I'm editing so I can just keep glancing in and out of them. I think that might be a worthwhile one to do. Uh, any more comments for the second? Yep. Uh, Prashant, have you used any Indian pens? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, if when I did the thing at the start, if someone had picked tray number two, they, that was pens from India. So I've got a number of Ranga pens. Uh, got like here. Here's one that's handy so this is a ranga santa uh, and i've got some fountain pen revolution pens as well again uh, indian pens bj the 699 is <coughs> sorry bj the 699 is my take with me vac pen i don't have to worry about breaking it yet you know if you leave it if you yeah who really cares uh pen friend craig rockanova is there right now uh, Marilyn, so if you want to check it out, uh, Teresa, Mike Matheson is the friendliest guy and can talk about anything. I know, I love watching his videos. Um, I like his inked ones because he, do, he seems to be quite focused on inks and this collection. Wow, some of the cards he pulls out. Uh, the one on the purple inks are pinky purple ones that he did just a few days ago was really good. And it was about three minutes long, which I thought was really good. Okay, so. <laughs> this is going to be a long one today anyway last week's video so last sunday i had uh, the video on Fremantle handmade pens didn't perform very well i was a wee bit disappointed with that but i didn't expect it to be too good because it's a very limited focus pen uh, tuesday's pen were on chinese starter pens so these are what i was thinking you know the first ones that you might want to get from of chinese pens they were all really cheap i think the jinhao 992 was on there uh friday's video that was about the endless regalia so this is uh, an endless recorder notebook using the regalia paper generated some really interesting comments about that um you know, I've had one, well, a couple of people saying how poorly that it performs for them. So I've only done that one testing on this first impressions video. So I haven't actually used it in anger yet. But when I do, I will create another, like a follow-up video on that. Uh, yesterday on the Tricky Little Questions, uh, we had a photo quiz. So 10, 10 uh, different photos. The game seems to, go, to have gone down quite well. This week's videos. So this afternoon... Um, when I was doing my Chinese starter pens, it would have been very easy for me to have all of the pens being from Jinhao because, you know, I've got such a large number and they seemed, and they are usually really good value. So today I've done my top five 
cheap Jin Hao pens. So that's going to be quite interesting. Uh, Tuesday, that's going to be my August wrap-up video. So how I got in with got on with my pens that I've used in August. Friday, that will be my pens in use for September, themed around Star Trek. Really interesting. Really enjoyed coming up with the pens. It was quite a challenge because I could get the first three, but the last two, it was really struggling to come up with them. So yeah, really looking forward to that. Um. On Saturday, my Tricky Little Questions video, it will be talking about how they put the holes in Swiss cheese. You know, that's something I've always really w w wonder w w worried, wondered about. How did they get the holes in there? Uh, so I did a bit of digging into that. That was quite interesting. And then Sunday next week, I know I've just shown it now and I'm recording it on Monday. So this is a quick turnaround video. I'll be doing the unboxing of the M400 pen that I've just shown. So that's a Moon Man pen. Uh, so that's the videos that I've been watching. Oh, that's my like past and upcoming videos. Book of the week. So I finished Terry Pratchett's Sorcery. Nice to have a Rincewind uh, story. Um, be interesting to see how it goes. Um, I can't remember. I know I have read other books because of how it ended up with him being uh, left in a different dimension. Um, and then I've started Weird Sisters, so that's the next one in the Terry Pratchett series. Uh, again, it's um, it's one that I enjoy because it's Granny Weatherwax and it's Nanny Og and Magrat. I'm not really that bothered about the Magrat character, but I love Nanny Og and Granny Weatherwax. Them and Death. They're my three favourite um, characters from the whole of the, the cycle of um, Discworld. So started that a couple of days ago. When I finish that, I'll finish that, I'm ho hoping maybe Thursday or Friday, I'm going to go and read the next Terry Goodkind book, which is, he says, getting it open, because I can't remember what it is. The last one was Pillars of Creation. And I struggled with that, so this is where it's going to be interesting to see how I get on with this next one, which is in there. Oh gosh, I've got to go all the way down to the bottom. Terry Goodchild, I'm kind. There we go. Um, the Pillars of Creation is the one I'll be starting next. First published back in 2002. I've already read it once, but uh, I'm going to be doing a reread of that. Let's jump back then to the comments. Uh, uh, Prashant just bought a pen, Can Write, excellent writer. I have seen Can Write. Um, the only thing that puts me off buying uh, a Can Write is because of it coming from uh, India. It's what the postage will be. Because uh, postage to Australia, I think from anywhere, it doesn't seem to be cheap. Blonde Scales 1, I haven't tried a VAC pen yet. Uh, I don't. I've got a number of vac pens. Um, my biggest issue is sometimes I find that the plunger blocks off the uh, section, so you've got to be a little bit fiddly with where you put the plunger. So that's one of the, my biggest issues. Uh, uh, Marilyn, well, all, she's going to uh, Marilyn's going to be participating in the thirty inch thirty days review and ink reviews. I've looked at that and never really. It's never really been something that has jumped at me i'm not although i've got loads of ink maybe i should try it uh definitely not the next month with 30 days but i think i will try that sometime in the future uh that might be worth having to think about but yeah if if you've got it go and, go and watch marilyn's channel really interesting videos um i love the the um like the bujo setup ones um i really enjoy seeing seeing how how that's done because it's something i'd like to get more into but uh, I'm not sure how it fits with my, uh, obviously my life, but well worth going and watching them. Really, really recommend them. Uh, Marilyn agreeing with BJ. I think that's about, oh yeah, I missed a comment there. But Fountain Pen Revolution makes some good stuff out of India. So Fountain Pen Revolution, I believe it's now owned by a company in America, but the pens are made from India. I've got um, two pens. I've got the Guru, which was uh, the cheaper one. I think it was about 10 Aussie dollars. And I've got the Darjeeling, which is about $20, $25 Aussie dollars. Really good pens, really write nicely. 
Um, the only issue I've had with it is with the Darjeeling. It doesn't seem to like the heat. Uh, so that's something I'm experimenting with. So yeah, Marilyn agrees with that. Uh, Teresa. Uh, let me just stroll down so we can hopefully see the whole comment. Uh, 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 so this is replying to Blonde Scales about the vac fillers. Uh, one, yeah, filling up, that's the biggest issue. Uh, so I've got my Pilot Custom 823. Here we go. Problem is, the section is too big to fit into diamine bottles. So very hard to use my diamine, ink, diamine inks. Now, yes, I know I use the 30 mil bottles of diamine ink. Will fit in the bigger ones. Um, so that's really my biggest gripe about it. Uh, there's a company here called Desk Bandit. They do sell the ink misers, uh, but they're out of stock. So I've got uh, email warnings when they get them in stock. So I'm going to get some ink misers. That means I'll be able to fill that up with diamine ink then. Uh, blonde scales, matter of finding one that calls to me. Yep, I know what you like, what you mean there. You know, if a pen doesn't call to you, you're not going to enjoy using it. Uh, BJ, the Pilot 823, the bit is the pinnacle of what a vac pen can be, and the amber is gorgeous. Yeah, as I say, there's mine in the amber. Absolutely love it. I've got broad nib on this. I think I've had I've had it now nearly two years. It was uh, it was actually a Christmas present from my wife. Again, I actually picked it and bought it. Um, she just then snaffled it away and gave it back to me. Absolutely love it. And in that two years, I've had maybe a month when it wasn't inked up. Normally, it's inked up all the time. Uh, oh, thanks, Marilyn. You can get a can right from Fountain Pen Revolution. So I will keep an eye out for, uh, again. Not this year's focus. Maybe next year's focus might be more Indian pens. I don't know. Andy, hi. Welcome. Um, uh, uh, Marilyn there. So on YouTube, the at Marilyn Darling show. I say really, really recommend that. Uh, Marilyn, <laughs> it's going to be, talk about that coincidence, it's going to be doing the Bujo setup as soon as I'm finished tonight. Um Andy went to the Pris Pris Prisbon. Brisbane pen meet yesterday. It was very nice for the first one. Really glad you enjoyed it. I think Stephen Just, who does the Just Turnings pen, I think he's one of the organisers there. Um, they do have one here in Perth. Uh, meets, I think it's every month. Problem is, it's where I live. So I, I live actually about 70 kilometres away from Perth. Uh, if I was to try and get it there, it takes me about an hour and a half because of public transport. So I don't often go to it. But yeah, I've been to a few. Quite enjoy them. Uh, Santa, hello. Welcome to you. Uh, Miss Marilyn Darling. Hi, Santa. Uh, Andy, being convinced about stub... Uh, being convinced about stub nibs, and I used the one for the first time yesterday. I've been getting quite into stub nibs. I've got... Uh, again, I'm just going to pull this one out as an example. This is the Ranga Santa. On here, I've got a 1.1 stub. This is a Yoho pen. Oh, Yoho pen. Yoho nib. Beautiful. The line variation is really, really nice. You know, you get this gorgeous natural line variation. So what I'm tending to do now is when I'm buying pens, is either get them with a broad or a 1.1 stub. As I showed earlier, my Lamy one here, this is the old style. That's got a 1.5 stub on it. Uh, Andy... Looking at getting a Twisby Eco with a stub. That's a good idea. The Twisby Eco, nice, um, affordable pen. And I believe uh, Yoho make their nibs. BJ, hello, hello. Uh, let me just see if there's any more comments. Can't see any more. So it's time to wrap up today's video. Thank you all for your time. I hope you've enjoyed it. I love doing these YouTube lives. I'm really surprised at about how much I enjoy them. Uh, let me just look at the time today. Oh, God, I'm going to be in big trouble. We've going been going for like an hour and a half. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Um, I'll leave the chat open for a few minutes after we finish. Uh, hope you have a nice week. So hopefully I'll have my shorts on later on today. So now the weather's warming up. Hope you all have a really good week, and I'll talk to you again soon.